Welcome to Chapter 9, Advanced Compositing. In this lesson, we're going to get more creative than the strict techniques. Um, you can explore some of the more artistic applications of Photoshop and um, create uh, composite multiple images into a poster. So we'll review the history panel, which is kind of like undo, but um, on steroids and um, this will set you up nicely for the second half of the piece this week which is creating something for your online portfolio um, uh, original artwork at some level um, <clears throat> so that's why I've only assigned one chapter this week um, so this we're going to go into bridge we're going to go to tools and I'm going, let me just show you. I'm in the lesson folder and I go into monster makeup, select all or shift select. So they all have, um, I'm in my essentials preview workspace. Then I say tools, Photoshop, load files into Photoshop layers. Um, And it's, you sort of wait for this. Um, I, as a whole, when I organize my layers, I will organize them in physical space, um, meaning what is on the top, like his hair, for example, um, I would put at the top. So I just keep sliding until it goes and you can move it on the top. Because I, to keep things uh, sensible, and not everybody works like this, I've, I've worked with layered files and it's just, um, people don't all think that way. Uh, I sort of, it's kind of like in web design where you have the head, the body, and you keep it sort of an orderly hierarchy from top to bottom. I kind of approach it like that. He would, the Franken guy is, they're going to be sort of our background because he's what we're basing it on. Um, so it's just about navigating your files. Um, this could go up more. It doesn't have to be. It's just you do want to think about your layer order to keep things straight. Because as you start to do advanced compositing, you're going to be dealing with... Um, more layer files and things get more complicated you need to be able to work around in those files so arrange those and they, they came in alphabet alphabetized and we're going to work with the liquify filter and other smart filters where it does it, it's not destructive where you can turn it on and off or you can um, work with it later, uh, work with it, adjusting the filter layer, uh, later. So we've got our Franken as our base. And now we're going to select all the layers except Franken. Command T, transform. We're going to go to 50%. Keep an eye up the top. And when you get to about 50, good. And then we're gonna move this over there. Still not quite right hit return and we're going to hide all the layers except the green skin texture and the Franken layer and to hide in review let's bring this guy down here just swipe along the eyes we're going to use the move tool this over his face. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. I 
Edit tree, free transform. Get this to fit the fixture of the face better. This is like a mask over his eyes. That works pretty good. Hit return to fit that over. Save your file. And in order to apply a smart filter, we need to convert this layer to a smart object. So I'm right clicking, convert to smart object, or you can go to the menu and click to smart object. And to apply the uh, liquify filter, go to filters, liquify. And you can see how there's just endless amounts of filters. Um, if you look at all of these little carrots or extra menus, there's all these different, um, how this is just sort of like endless. Um, Photoshop really can be endless with how many filters you apply. So then we'll get our dialog box making sure that your green skin layers selected filter liquify um, set the opacity to 75 percent you can follow these out the window pretty much okay and in the properties click on show backdrop 75% opacity. Then we're going to zoom in, which is spacebar command. Select the forward warp tool, the first tool. Set the brush size to that. Just follow their settings 150. 75. Pull the right eyebrow down close to the eye opening and pull up from under the eye. This is basically just to get his map, his mask to fit better. Repeat steps eight on the left eyebrow and under the eye area. Okay. Now it fits better on there. So this works. Um, so this is just a very cool thing. Um, you can use, this also helps when you're doing beauty retouching. You can sort of liquefy and get rid of a double chin. Um, you can sort of warp things, uh, not just when you're making a monster mask, but um, continue on with the rest of this exercise. Let me know if you have any more questions. And um, the other thing that I just want to show really quickly is the history panel. So the history panel is showing all of the moves that I made. And you can go back. and delete now we wouldn't want to do that right undo delete states but the point being you could do that so it's really considered the uh, undo on steroids because you can always undo step backwards which is just you can keep going back hundreds of steps but this way it shows you all of the steps that you've made um, and that's a very powerful thing that they've added um, so continue on with this assembling it with the other pieces and putting this on the background and compiling and I'll do a quick demo of some ideas for portfolio pieces things um, get as creative as you can and want to. So this is a really fun and timely uh, exercise, but um, really 
experiment with this as with the training wheels when they show you in this chapter and uh, but while you're working on this keep in mind what you would like to do and any vision or visualization you have for your own project